We are honored to be presenting today The Secrets of Endgame, a highly anticipated video here at the Builder Blog. Endgame is one of the only robots to win both the Giant Nut and the Golden Bolt, and we're dying to know how they did it. So looking at your robots, you guys use large-scale springs in quite a few spots. Why is that? I don't see that on many other battle bots. Um, well, obviously we have the South Rider one, just to help the South Riding, and the other place we use them uh, is on the front of the robot. Um, so we have little springs to keep our forks and widgets on the ground. Uh, we noticed that in the past years, like you look at Bite Force, their widgets will be bouncing all over the place, um, and we want to make sure they're stuck to the ground all the time. And even when in-game hits someone, and our robot bounces, we want to keep our forks on the ground. Um, so that's the idea behind the springs, just to put a little bit of pressure, you know, in the downward uh, direction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Controllers. So this is another, this is a custom switch here that feeds into a custom board for the ESC. Um, and that board has receivers on it too. Yeah, it's got, it's got a couple receivers. So the redundant receivers on it. Is everything inside your robot custom? Uh, what in that? Mm, yeah, I can't think of anything that isn't. There's, there's two batteries that we have in bottom. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> the ones we haven't extended the wire. So, yeah, yeah this, this, this battery is not custom. Yeah, and I mean, this battery is mostly not custom, but I did extend that wire. Okay. So, so yeah. almost even the batteries are custom at yeah. this point. I, uh, but yeah, we make. We make like a generic version of these switches to uh, for teams to buy. Uh, it's got all the same features. It uses the same like circuitry and hardware on the inside. So oh, that's awesome. You're making parts for other robots. So it seems like all the motors point either left or right, all except for this one that's pointing straight down. Yes. It confuses me immensely. So that's the that's the self rider motor. So you can see here, if I uh, turn there, you can see the motor will spin and the arm will move. Oh. It, it, I thought that was the motor that made it fly. <laughs> <laughs> New configuration. So what do you think your secret to success has been? Yeah, for us, I think the secret, there's, there's a few secrets. Um, one of the big ones is, is having everything rubber mounted in the robot. So our motors are all floating in, in quite hard rubber, uh, not too soft. Uh, the idea is that they, it'll only take the really big impacts and take the peak out of that. Um, if you use foam, like we have the electronics in for things like motors, um, that it just bottoms out immediately and it doesn't really help. So you'll find our rubber is, is actually quite hard. Like this is, you can't really squish it with your hand because that's that goes between two motors to stop them crashing into each other so i i think once we started doing that that was the real sort of upgrade to, to our robot and it sort of made it more reliable and while you're hitting like and subscribe to the scorpio sport blog make sure you hit our uh, hit our instagram and facebook as well in game underscore battlebot uh give us some support yeah, so we have we have a precharger on on the switch so that when you insert this allen key the light comes on and our receivers turn on Wow. And then uh, see this little startup beeps. And I haven't turned it on yet. It just it like tells us that everything's okay. Yeah, it gives us a lot of peace of mind. Like, uh, so that means you know, when, when, when we originally first built the robot, we just had removable Sorry. links. It's just, just um, just and every time you went to turn anything on, you would, you know, be fearful. Is it just going to burst into flames? Someone's there with a with a pair of side cutters on the <laughs> on the link, being like, I'm ready to cut it. Yes. If anything's going wrong, I'll cut. <laughs> but this time you can just put the key in and it's like, everything's good, you get a little green light. So, I, I see racks and racks of wedges behind you. Yeah. It's a game I always struggle with, is what to choose for each opponent. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have some selection process or like a spreadsheet where you've decided what is the optimal wedge configuration for all 50 attendees? Or do you just make it up on the fly? We normally make it up on the fly. Um, so that, you know, three or four of the core members will have a big debate for two or three hours um, before each fight about what to do. We'll look at what they're doing, what they could do, the different options that the other person could run and make sure we, you know, we we'll, we'll generally have a good idea about what they're gonna do and we we'll try to counter that best. Uh, but there's always some contingency going on if they choose a different configuration as well. Yeah, Max hates it because we'll debate it for an hour and then be like, okay, we'll do that. And then we'll send Max to go grind some wedgelets. And then an hour later, he'll come back 
with the ground wedgelets, and we've changed our mind again, and we'll give them something else to go grind. So, oh, I don't even think I've never heard of before. They're like, take these pontoons and go grind them up. Like, what? <laughs> What's the pontoon? <laughs> He's a champ. So the end game team has done something quite impressive. They've turned the pre-fight twitch test into a full-blown robot diagnosis. They literally check everything on their robot before the match begins. And you just gotta see it for yourself. Let's check it out with me. Wait a minute, do you have cheat notes on the radio itself? Absolutely. So some of them you don't use very often, like your self-rider position sensing on and off. Or your drive, you can disarm it for powering up the robot. Or your weapons, you can turn on and off individually if one gets damaged. Oh, oh and that, that one to reverse the weapon in case we get a tire stuck in it. Witch Doctor Hypershock style. <laughs> so, after they have their amazing on-off switches that power up the receivers before main power, they then go through and they test each individual motor. Because keep in mind, uh, despite the fact in-game only really has four functions, left drive, right drive, weapon, and self-rider, there's actually seven motors and all custom electronics inside the robot. So right now they're going through and they're testing each individual motor, and you'll notice here on the weapon, when they do the first weapon test, it spins one direction, but when they test the other motor, it spins the opposite direction. One of the weapon motors has been wired backwards weapon direction of the two sides the left side was going the correct way the right side isn't so we can flip it with the transmitter but we'd like to keep it um, the same between multiple sets of electronics so we'll just flip the pins instead So the in-game team heads into the test box. They first use the red screwdriver to power down main power on the robot. They then open it up and do the repair right here in the test box. I, I'm honestly amazed. One, that I've never thought to do something like this myself. But two, that they've done so much problem solving and diagnosis so quickly. Uh, if they had just put the batteries in, did a quick twitch test, said, yep, everything looks pretty good, and then go into the arena, the weapon doesn't work right because one of the motors is not spinning the correct direction, and then they take damage, then they don't know really what caused the issue. It could have been something, <laughs> something got damaged, but it was the simple crosswire. And by going through, taking the time to test each individual motor and see which direction each motor is going, they were able to solve this problem and probably save losing a match. So gentlemen, what's the plan for this test? Spin up and drive for three minutes and hope nothing breaks. All right, I can't wait to see. <laughs> the final piece to the puzzle is they completely run the robot for three minutes as if it was fighting. That way they know the batteries last long enough Everything works properly. A quick recharge, and it's ready to fight. So, when I went to South Korea, mm -hmm. it was a huge problem for me trying to hook my power, my tools into their <laughs> power system. Yeah. As an international competitor here at BattleBots, and the only international team to ever go home with the big prizes, uh, how do you deal with the U.S. power tools? We actually have a set of power tools that we have just for in the US. Um, so we'll have grinders, battery drill chargers, things like that. We, we have a set that we can only use here and then we have a set that we can only use at home. Um, because most things like that can't be used in both places. So what's with the tether to your wrist? Well, is this so you can have mind control over the robot? So Vegas is very dry and hot. And the floor is very plastic. The, the, the floor is very plastic, and uh, people get static shocks everywhere from anything all the time. And uh, last year we we uh, killed a receiver and a couple of receivers, um, and uh, not again, never again. So we don't handle any of our electronics unless we're earthed.
So I gotta know, how does it make you feel when you hear people call you Orange Bike Force? Yeah, I mean, Bike Force was obviously a very dominant bot in his time. Um, you know, it won three giant nuts. And to be compared to them is, is you know, it's flattering, um, honestly, uh, that people think that, you know, we could compete and, and do just as well. Um, yeah, I, we, we're quite happy to be called Orange Bike Force. Uh, we do think our robot is uh, leagues in the future now because Bike Force has been away for a few years. But, you know, the, the fact that the comparison is being made is, is, yeah, a compliment to us. Did you ever think when you got started in all of this that you would be a giant nut and golden bolt winner? Um, when I started doing battle bolts, um, I didn't think we'd actually do it. Like, that was always the goal. Um, like, we wanted to do it and we always want to win, you know, we like winning. So, um, for us it was a challenge. We love it because there's a whole bunch, there's hundreds of engineers here doing the same thing as you, all trying to do it better than you. So, you know, to, to actually win it is, is a huge achievement for us, I think. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we ever really expected to do it, uh, but absolutely stoked that we did. So I, I need to know, do you display your giant, or uh, the golden bolts screwed into the giant nut, or do you keep them separate? We keep the, the nut and the bolt separate. They can go together, and we've done it. We did it once, but we didn't want to scuff the anodizing on the golden bolt. So uh, we just did it once, and then we, we set them separately. Why am I not recording this? Oh, what is going wrong with the cart? We spent all the money on the robot, so the cart, we just found it in the dump. Oh. <laughs> well, they're gonna see you coming, or at least hear it. <laughs> I'm showing everyone else shame. Professional <laughs> team, I swear. <laughs> So, I, I know everyone was teasing you guys for the squeaky cart, but I understand you finally fixed it. Can we see it? It's not squeaking anymore. <laughs> it's okay, I'll, I'll edit that out. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe not.